Hi and welcome to another video. Um, today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite species amongst ants. I'm um, going to talk about you about leafcutter ants. Um, as I have told you in the last video, I personally keep one colony of leafcutter ants. It's an Atlas extens colony. Now, um, the reason why leafcutter ants are especially fascinating to me is the uh, is how complex their society is. Uh, for me personally, that's the main reason why I'm interested in ants at, at the first place. It's uh, their capability to build so societies, build social structures, complex societies um, that in many ways are similar than, that, than human societies. And uh, this capability of, the, of ants to build complex so uh, social structures, societies, is extremely fascinating, to me at least. And um, leafcutter ants are probably at the top of this, of this development. Uh, they probably have the most complex societies, they build the most complex societies. Different ants have different tasks. It's extremely fascinating. Um, leafcutter ants I consider as extremely fascinating. Now, um, there has been, I, I found uh, another study, and uh, this is just, just an amazing study that I want to share with you, I want to talk with you about it. The link for the study itself is in, the, it's in this description, um, so read through it if you're interested. I'm going to summarize here what, what, what's going on here with this study. Now, uh, before I start talking about the study, I have to talk a little bit more in general um, about, about nuptial flights of, of ants, so you understand what, what it's all about. Um, I've, I've made a video in the past about nuptial flights. Well, we made a video in the, in the main series. I put the link. I will put the link here in the video. Um, so if you, if, you're not, if you don't know about nuptial flights, watch the video and then come back here so you're informed. Um, what, what it basically means is that once a colony is large enough, they start starting to produce uh, winged ants. Winged ants, speaking, uh, we're speaking of uh, young queens and young males that are ready for nuptial flight, so new colonies can be founded. And um, the queens, the young queens, before they have nuptial flights, you know, they they are they're, they get a lot of uh, they get a lot of resources because they need to. Have a huge. Uh, fat, they need to have huge fat reserves, so they are ready to build a new colony. And also, they are usually much larger than normal ants. So uh, it's actually quite a task for a colony, for an ant colony, to produce uh, those young queens, because it, it uses a lot of resources to to produce them. And uh, so they are very uh, they are very important and and. It's a lot of effort to produce them. So, um, especially with leaf cutters, by the way, because leaf cutters they have huge queens. Uh, depending on the species, can vary between two and three centimeters uh, in length. And these are just it just takes a lot of resources to to produce those kind of queens. Now, now sometimes it can happen. You know, if you if you have if you observed nuptial flights in the past, uh, once a queen is fertilized, it will land and rip out its wings. And if you have seen that in the past, uh, maybe you have realized that those wings are not as firmly attached because um, they have to be capable. The queens have to be capable to to remove those wings, so they are not as firmly attached as, for example, with bees or or wasps. And uh, this can lead to to a, to a downside. In, in nature, it can when 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 the queens are already in the nest but didn't uh, didn't have the nuptial flight yet, it can happen that they lose the wings. Due to certain circumstances, they lose the wings before the nuptial flight, um, which basically makes them makes it impossible for them to participate in the nuptial flight. And so, when this happens, the queen basically or this young queen basically becomes useless because she cannot participate in the nuptial flight. Therefore, she cannot uh, found a new colony. And for ants, um, this might sound cruel, but for ants. It is very important that those res that they get those resources back because they cannot waste resources. Um, one thing that that it's, it's extremely interesting with ants is their efficiency. You know, they're highly efficient when it comes to man managing their resources, managing what they have. And if a young queen who is not fertilized yet loses its wings uh, before it, before nuptial flight, 
then um, the workers of this colony are going to kill this queen in order to get the resources back, you know, at least part of the resources, and they will feed the corpse to the, to the brood so uh, the, the resources can come back into the colony. And this sound, might sound extremely cruel, but it's, you know, the, the, this, uh, this way of being as efficient as possible made, made ants so successful in the first place. So this is an important part. Now we come to this study. Um, this also happens to queens in uh, leafcutter colonies. Uh, there are different species of leafcutters, by the way. Uh, the colony I keep is an Atos extens colony. Uh, this study has been made with Acromyrmix uh, leafcutter ants, so it's a different species. But uh, they have very similar, um, similar behaviors, so it might be that this is also valid for other leafcutter ants. But it's, it's extremely interesting, you know, when, when this, the same thing happens in a leaf cutter colony, there's a problem because um, leaf cutter ants, they uh, dep they're depend on, on fungus to feed their colony. So uh, what leaf cutter ants do, most of you have probably already heard of them or what, they, what, what, their, what their secret is, is that they actually um, build their own fungus gardens. They cut leaves out in the wild, bring them back to the nest and those those leaves are actually not for, for direct consumption, they are as uh, meant uh, as soil, you know, they, they process it to, um, in a special way so they can grow fungus on those leaves and uh, the fungus is actually the, the, the fungus produces the food for the colony afterwards. So they are actually farmers, they produce fungus in their nests and they are highly dependent on this fungus. They cannot survive without the fungus. They have uh, adapted so well to this kind of living that they um, that's they, they need the fungus they, they for 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 nutrition. And because they are so dependent on those fungus on the fungus, they have actually uh, they they have lost the ability to process um, meat for for uh, for their colonies or for their brood. So they cannot. They don't go out and catch insects like other ants. Um, they don't process meat at all. They 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 lost their ability, and therefore uh, meat is is of no use for this colony. So if a, if a queen in this colony uh, loses its wings, they cannot do the same thing like in other colonies where they just kill that that the queen and feed it to the brood because they cannot process her right. But still. Um, this queen took a lot of resources to, to, to produce her, so uh, there has to be another way to, 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 uh, that the colony can benefit of this queen, even if she is not able to do nuptial flight anymore. And th there has been a discovery made by scientists um, that uh, those queens actually take on new roles in, inside the colony, which is extremely fascinating. Now, uh, what can those queens do? Um, if you know a little bit about leaf cutter ants, there are a lot of different roles inside the inside the net, uh, colony, and depending on the role, there's also you know the the, the workers have different physical uh, sizes, depending on what their role is. There are uh, the, the the miners that are the, the small ants that are mainly in charge of. Uh, caring for the brood and for the fungus gardens, there are the medias, the, the middle, well, middle-sized ants that their main job is um, to harvest leaves and there are larger ants that are soldiers, their job is to protect the colony. And a, a young queen elate is, is larger than everything else in the colony, she's maybe around three centimeters in, in length. So, so she's not. Uh, she cannot really be, become a, a fungus gardener because she's just too large. She cannot really man maneuver in the nest in a way that that would allow that, or care for the brood or things like that. She's also not fast enough to be a leaf cutter to go out to, to cut leaves. Uh, it would be just a waste of energy to have such a huge ant just cutting leaves and. But what the one thing she has is huge mandibles, and um, therefore she's very very well uh, adapted to be a fighter, a soldier, and that's exactly what they do. So uh, they have observed that um, young queens who were not fertilized, who lost their wings before nuptial flights, 
they showed much more aggression than you queens usually do. What queens usually do is they, they if there's a danger, if there, if there's a threat, they run for safety. Um, they try to avoid fights at all costs. They try to get get to safety at when when some danger appears or other insects, other ants. Um, but as soon as, as this happened, you know, as soon as an unfertilized queen realized she cannot go on nuptial flight anymore, this changed. She became aggressive and she started defending the colony. And being again being a benefit for the colony because she's an, ex an excellent fighter. She's huge. She has huge mandibles. She can protect the colony, and that's exactly what, what they observed. And then they start made a study about it. They actually did it in a in a controlled environment that they removed um, wings of of young elates of young queens, and 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 observed how they behave. And they always found the same behaviors, mainly that they become very aggressive and become soldiers of the colony, defenders of the colony, and therefore are still beneficial to the colony. Now, it is an extremely interesting and fascinating find that shows again how complex those societies are. Those are things um, that people didn't know for a long time. We always knew that, that uh, especially leafcutter ants, have very, very complex societies, but there's still so much we don't know yet, and th this is a new discovery that ex is, ex again, extremely fascinating. And, yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you about today. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to be uh, informed if a new video comes out. And if, you can also leave a like, I always appreciate it. And, yeah, we'll see each other on the next video. Thank you very much.